Good evening YouTubers and welcome back to the channel. So tonight we're going to do a video on um, just checking over um, the ignition system and the um, water pump pulley or alternator belt pulley. Check the carburetors, the dash pots, check the air cleaner and uh, check the fuel lines on this uh, 1968 single chamois sport. Now, uh, as most cars are from the 70s and 80s and earlier, they had the carburetors. A lot of them had dash pots on, which you can see here in the video. Um, they are uh, Strongbergs on this vehicle in particular. And they're a, they're a great car. Few people have a few issues with them. I've never had any issues, um, personally. That's a dash pot and there's a the piston in the top. A lot of cars had SUs on, which were a similar sort of design carburetor. These have a rubber diaphragm, a SU have a, a, a piston and a spring in. Very similar, but these got a rubber diaphragm. Um, and you should always check the oil in them because they do use a bit of oil. Now, there is special carburetor oil to put in the dash pots, but you can use um, ATF fluid. It's just a little bit thinner, so it helps it when you're revving. We're also going to check the spark plugs, uh, just check the check the gaps and check how it's running. And we'll also take the distributor cap off and check the um, points. Now this car has points and condenser. The red one at the side here, the, the Sunbeam Sport, doesn't. That has a, an, an electronic ignition, which I'll show later on which is a, a, a one two three ignition module a lot more accurate with the uh, ignition timing and it doesn't fluctuate as much as it does on with a set of points so what we'll do well firstly we'll, we'll start with the easy bit the um the points so this is the distributor cap here i'll just flick the they have two little spring clips on, as you probably know. Just flick them off either side. Now, the ignition's off on this. Now, this is a 20, what they call a 25D distributor. The later vehicles had a 45D distributor where the, you'll see the plug leads on, on the one next to us come off the top. These actually screw in. And there's a little, there's a little screw just inside here, which holds the ignition leads in. So anyway, we've removed, first we'll remove the cap and then we'll just take the, the rotor arm off. So this is the rotor arm. As you can see, I'm just trying to get you in focus on my camera. Yeah, there you go. And this is a, a red rotor arm. Um, I don't know why, it's just what came with the car. So what we'll do, we'll just, we need to make sure this top's clean so we can get good contact with the with the little, the little carbon in the top there, the spring loaded. Can we check that? That's working fine. So we'll clean that up, we'll clean that up, and we'll clean the uh, edge of it up. Which took, so, when it, so obviously, once the, the distributor's spinning, it goes around and touches each spark plug connection and, and sends ignition coil spark to each plug and then uh, ignites as, as it comes on the compression stroke. So, firstly what we'll do, we'll just check the, the points gap. Now this is very important that we have a good points gap, otherwise um, your car will be bad starting. Sometimes they splutter um, when, when they, they, they jump as if they're running funny, when the gap's closed or open too much, and purely bad, bad starting. So generally on these older cars, the points gaps are about 15, 16 thou thickness of, a, of a, a packet where the points come in potentially are, are a condenser also has a condenser which is this item here which controls a spark via the via the coil which is just up on the bulkhead just up there if you can see the gold sports coil on this one so what we'll do firstly we'll um, we'll just adjust the points or we'll check the points for adjustment and make sure we've got the correct gap so what I'll have to do, I'll just turn it over by hand. So I have an ignition 
timing mark on, on the Hillman MP here. So we'll just turn it to her on top dead centre. My car's out of gear. Oh God, it's a bit tight now. It's got good compression here because it's a, it's a new engine and about five or six thousand miles. So. Okay, so what we've done, I've adjusted the, uh, turn the engine around. So we've got the cam. Which is just here on the on the there's four points because it's a four cylinder. If it was a six cylinder, it'd have six or eight, it'd have eight. We adjusted the the high spot of the distributor drive, which got a bit of movement up and down. Which I have to check that. So it's touching the cam on the points, and that actually gives us a little gap. So I'll find the feeler gauges and uh, we'll just check the gap on them. Now it looks it looks a little bit small, the gap, to be honest. Probably do with adjusting, so what we do with adjusting, I can't find a feeling, it just must be in the other bag. Anyway, I know it should look like it's a little bit bigger than that. The gap, a simple task there's a little scrub screw here, so we slacken the grub screw off like so, and there's a, a, a little adjustment on here. So we turn it one way, it closes the points up, and we turn it the other way, it opens the points up. So you can see if we excessively open the points, it's a massive gap. So that, that's um, something doesn't look quite right with that. To be honest, something not quite right. We'll uh, we'll have a little investigation on that. Okay, so you can now see we've got a gap in the points. Uh, I haven't got my feeler gauges because they're in the boot of this green car. Unfortunately, I can't get in the green car because the red car's parked next to it. And I can't get in the red car because the silver car's parked next to it. Which is the problem having three cars in a small garage. Or, well, not a small garage. Three cars in the garage. Unfortunately, the boot release for the green one, with it being the posh version, is internally. And I can't get in to get it out. And I've got a bag with some other tools in with all my imperial spanners. So we'll take a guess at that, but that's uh, about right. But what the what the issue was, was this little lug here was bent over too much, so it wasn't allowing me to get a proper gap. Now we checked the points just to make sure they're not pitted, which they're not because they're brand new last year. And they've just cleaned the rotor arm up, like I've said here, with some emery paper. So we'll put this back on now. And we've just got to make sure it lugs, locks in on the lug. There you go, like that. And then... We'll just have a quick look inside the distributor cap so you can see all the electrodes. Oh, put on the elbow. Um, you can see all the, the electrodes here on the uh, on the cap, and they have um, they are there. And as the rotor arm rotates, it picks up, and each one of them sends a spark down to um, each plug lead. So that's in good condition because again, this is a new cap. It's only about nine thousand miles. There's no cracks in it or anything. It's nice and dry, so we're happy at that. So we'll pop that back on there. Now, with this being an early distributor, you can get different types of caps for these. You can get them ones with the push-on leads. Um, it's almost like a little U-shaped connection, and that is for the and it has a shape in the in the distributor cap. That's the power lead from the coil just further up here, and that runs that's the ignition lead so we've got um we've got power to the um power to the distributor so we've got a good spark next what we'll do we'll just squeeze a plug out and see um how that fares up um because i've not took the plugs out for a while on this so we'll do number one here now i'm going to start with number one plug like i just said get my little got this little plug spanner it's a, it's a brilliant bit of kit Dead handy, it flexes in all different ways. It's great for the Hillman imps. Just open. Oh, cut that open. Now these have got a rubber seal around the plug opening, which is great. Um, stops any muck going down the engine. You, know, you can blow it off before you you untake your plugs out. So it's a it's a great great thing they thought of, but they do deteriorate. So I make them. You can buy them, but I make them out of some rubber every couple of years. So this plug's got a, it's a lovely gap. It's nice and clean. It's just a nice colour. Um, just just right, really. You can just see there and focus. It's got a good gap on it. The electrodes are not worn. That's the little bit that sticks out to the ceramic. They tend to wear and you just throw them away then. But yeah, it's, it's clearing up lovely, that plug, number one. 
So I'll do always number number three out. Um because that's that's running on the same cab, so I would think number two would probably be the same. They are new plugs not long ago. Uh, probably about three thousand miles. So I'll just screw this one back in, put the the plug lead back on, and then um always number three out. Now not to nip these too hard, just give them a nip. Because you it being aluminium, you don't want to do any damage and strip the thread, otherwise you end up helicoiling, which is a bit of a pain. Especially on these back, well, on all of them probably here in position anyway. Um, so we'll just whiz the back the number three out and see what that's like. It's a little bit awkward. Number four is right down there. It's a bit tight and it's awkward with the span on the bulkhead, but it's manageable. Right, so right, so this one's a little bit wet, as you can see. Um, electrode in the gap's good. I think it's just because the carburetor. Probably a slight of adjustment on the choke or the back one just weeping a little bit when it's been stood. Um, so we'll, we'll recheck that when it gets hot. But um, it's running a little bit richer, so maybe I just need to weaken the back carb off. Uh, but again, what we'll do, we'll try it when it's. I have only backed it in the garage, so it's probably been on choke a bit and it's not got hot enough at the back end to just dry the plugs out. But um, we'll recheck them. But again, the the, the good. Um, I replace these every year, two years, they don't do a great deal of mileage. They're normally about uh, 70 odd pence a plug in the past, but now they're about two quid, two and a half quid, depending on who you get them off on eBay. You normally get four for about eight, eight to ten quid, so they're two, two and a half quid each. Um, so they're quite cheap to replace. I use BP6ES's in this and BP7's in the red. Of course, that's got the electronic ignition. Runs a little bit hotter, um, so it just takes a bit longer to warm up. But I like the BP6 CSs. I've always used them. I've also put a little dot on each spark plug lead, so one on one, two on two, three dots, and and, and didn't bother with the back one because that's obviously number four. Just in case you pull a few leads off and you get mis mismatch. It's a bit awkward to do on the cap here. I think I have done in the past, but it's gone now. So that's uh, that's the plugs checked. So we'll just uh, we'll just do the air filter. So these are a bit of a nightmare to get off. Stick on this car. Oh yeah, got it off. And as you can see, I've scratched all the top, getting it on and off, which is a bit of a pain. So these are the two air filter elements, and they're just a simple push on. So you can see the inlet. So look in there. The inlet to one carburetor and you can put your finger down you've got long fingers and pull the dash pot up and then this is the other element so what i've done with these these are quite expensive to buy these are air filters to a point like some people are asking 100 pounds on ebay they're just taking the mick so i thought i've got a cunning plan here so i bought a metro or mini air filter which is a big round circular one I've got a spare one up there and I took the top bit and the bottom bit the top bit and the bottom bit off the old air filters I then trimmed the edge off around here off the new air filter and I cut it in half cut it and I folded it round and glued it on with my glue gun and hey presto, I've got a new air filter. In fact, I've got two air filters out of one air filter. Air filter cost me four quid. About half an hour of mucking around and whatnot, which was awkward for the first attempt because obviously I had to get the old filter off. This will fall off now when I replace them. And uh, I glued them in and it saves me a lot of money. You know, now these do, when the engine's on these, like any car, gets a bit uh, breathy, they fill up, they block up quite quick, but this has done about, I think about 3,000 miles these, and they're still in really good clean condition, so what they do, just pop them back in there, it just pushes on, there's a raised section on the filter housing, pop that on, and we'll put the casing back on, it's a bit tricky, because it's, uh, it's right up on the bulkhead, now this one's tighter than the, 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 the red car for some reason, so it just catches on the bulkhead, but once it's in it's clear, 
then we'll do just put the clips on one two one at the back which is a bit of a nightmare three and the one at the front four and then not to forget the vacuum oh sorry the breather hose we are just going to make sure it's on square and that that runs that runs back into the um, engine so the oil drains back into the crankcase and uh, what i try to do is line up all my screws with the flow of, of of direction of anything so my mate who's into concourse stuff he said oh you've got to make sure you you do the flow so that one goes that way that goes that way so all my all my hose clips fall in 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 the flow of uh, what way they go so i'll just give it a bit of a, a wipe i do need to give this car a good going over because they've been used and oops that's not come on we've been used it's got a bit battered so i really need to repaint that air filter housing and sort that out this year um repaint probably the filler cap that's a few chips around the edges repaint repaint the bracket or the sort this oil filter oil cooler out do a bit of touching up i think it's a job next job after after april um up to scotland in the in the uh the red one that I, i'm going to take this apart we'll do some videos on cleaning and painting things i've got all sorts of chips on the um alternator pulley and so a, a bit of a, a refresh of the engine bay probably won't go a won't go amiss but uh, anyway that's it for now um, see you in a bit now one thing we really need to check and the final thing really on the engine bay of course of course oh, we need to check the oil we checked the oil and water the other week um i ran another video but uh, yeah, i've got my got my halogen light here which is a great addition what we need to do is check the uh, the fuel lines now quite a lot of my friends have had issues with this modern fuels even if they're using e5 and rotting the uh, the fuel hose lines now my red car like i've said in a previous video i've never changed the lines on that and at 16 years old and they were as good as a the day they were put on uh, and i've never had any issues with this yet my friend steve who's had a ilman imp he had hose on for less than six months and it was absolutely rotted and cracked to beyond doubt now it was a brand new hose wasn't he doesn't buy cheap quality it was a decent quality hose he bought but for some reason it just got attacked by um just got a bit attacked by the by the um fuel okay so i was just trying to set up a bit better but it's very difficult to see but at the bottom just down there you can see my i get my hand on you can see my fuel hose here and uh, i've had a good look at them and a good feel and that goes across to the bulkhead just over the far way very difficult to see but see that but these hoses uh, are five years old no six years old and they're absolutely in perfect condition um, so i don't understand why people are having hose issues i don't know what it is maybe the hot where they are i don't know i really don't understand uh, i've never personally had any issues not to say that people don't because i have seen it um and i really don't understand why they crack on the outside when the fuel runs on the inside it seems very uh very odd but hey ho that's what happens so one thing we'll just do we'll just check the oil because the dip sticks down here on this little imp and uh, it's been stood a while so the oil level's spot on there nice and clean even though it does want an oil change because i change them every i do tend to change them every every show season uh, fan belt could do with a bit of a tighten up i know i said in a previous video it's it's okay but it's it could probably jump off i'll just i'll just nip that up a little bit uh, there's a brake servo there's no physical signs of any leaks the servo hose looks okay i made a stainless steel pipe that goes across and then a, a rubber jointer here um that's where we fill the oil on the imps just open it there and that's the, uh, the oil chamber and then that's a little breather hose which goes to the flame trap this is a vented cap like they have on the later cars so it can breathe through the center and then comes out the four holes at the side there and just pushes on with a spring clip could probably do with a repaint this is the engine mounting which holds the back end up so very easy to take an engine out you've got 
got six nine sixteen spanners around the back nuts you've got three quarter here and then down in each corner you've got a 13 mil or a half inch here and then there's two down the side the back panel comes off take your hoses and your wires off um accelerator and choke cable vacuum hose off and it's done you need about six spanners an half inch a seven sixteenths three quarter a nine sixteenths straight screwdriver a little five sixteenths for the choke cable which goes down there um and that's about it really you just jack the engine the car up get a jack underneath it support the gearbox under your bolts your bumper pull it out quite um simple car to work on really um what we'll just do is have a look at the red one which i've just got the bonnet open at the back so you'll see the difference with the distributor cap on this this has got the this is a 25d uh, distributor but this is an electronic one so i'll take the cap off this and you'll see the difference on this that's got a different rotor arm in and it's also got an electronic module so it's a one two three ignition and it's a great bit of uh, machining, this uh, distributor. It's, it's, uh, it's in really good, really good. It's, it's made an improvement to the car. It starts fantastic. It runs a lot better. So I just pop the... Just, again, it's got the little lug on for the rotor out. So just got to make sure it sits on in the right place. Brand new cap. So these used to have a, a brown... used to come with a brown cap. Um, but they've upgraded them to a black cap, which I think is better for the classic british cars i know fords and and some of the vws had a brown cap on um and that suits that but i like the british cars with a black cap on just a bit more in keeping um but like i said this is exactly the same as a green car there except it's the same engine cc this drives a little bit this is a bit more nippier don't know whether it's because it's a bit lighter with it being a later car the shell's not as strong uh, and as thick as the earlier Roots car, which is the green one, um, I'm unsure. Uh, but this is drives a lot smoother um, because of the the bigger tyres, and that one's the red one's got low profiles, and then the Fiesta. Well, that's just that's just something completely different altogether. Um, and you can you can feel the difference between the 70s and the 80s, and how much the 80s have come on from the 70s. And they're still a driver's car, the 80s car, that you know, they're not too far, or the, the Fiesta anyway, it's not too modern where you you lose focus on what you're doing, you've still got to change gears and you've still got to press the brakes a bit harder than you would in a modern vehicle. And it's still a bit noisier, but not as noisy as the imps. The, the downside with the imp is you, the, the exhaust is, is just here and it's um, you've got about 12 or 18, 18 inches as a run round before it goes into the manifold it's a very short run so you you get a certain drone in it a certain revs on the imp and it's always at the nice speed you want to go at it drives your potty whereas the fiesta's a bit quieter because it's got a longer exhaust and the engine's at the front however i love them all you know the green one drives beautiful old-fashioned old style smooth the red one bit sportier and like i said the fiesta is just a zipper it's absolutely fantastic and i love it to bits um and it won't be going anywhere uh quickly and neither will these two really I've, i'll stick with them a bit longer unless something else crops up and then if something does crop up i think the only one i could sell is the green one and i would it would break my heart because i don't sell cars I've had the red one since my daughter was born, that's about 20 years. So I've got a lot of history with that, with the family. Uh, I won't sell a Fiesta because I just love that. So the green one would be the one I'd sell. And it wouldn't be cheap because you cannot get them in this condition. And um, But there's no plans to sell it at the moment. It's going to be a keeper for now. It, it uh, doesn't cost anything to park in here. It's free road tax, no MOT. It's just the insurance every year. So if it's stud, it won't make any odd arm. But I don't like them being stud because it does them no good, uh, the brakes and whatnot. So they need to be used, and I do rotate them. So I was out in the Fiesta the last couple of weekends. The Red Imp's the next one to go out in. But I am going to uh, Ecos in Scotland in April. So we need to. I really need to get my backside into gear and sort that out this weekend. So this weekend, bank holiday weekend, wheels off the Red Imp clean it underneath, 
check the brakes over, do the oil and filter, check the lights, check the waters, everything, give it a full check over and we're ready then for April. And we'll do a video of the setting off and heading up to Bonnie, Scotland for our Hillman Imp weekend. Anyway, that's it for this evening. Hope you've enjoyed what I've uh, gone through. You know, it's just basic maintenance. We all should be doing it. Ignore it if you don't like it. Watch it if you do. It'd be great, you know, if you subscribe as well. It's just them little hints and tips that I've picked up owning classics for 25 plus years, you know, and I just passed a bit of knowledge I know. I'm not an expert. I know what I know, and I don't know what I don't know. Um, but it's just general checking over before you put your car back on the road after it's been up for the winter period. You'd be surprised if you don't check stuff over, particularly brakes and the tyre pressures, oil and filters and, and water levels. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll stop chunnering on and uh, I'll see you on the next video.